The way we use the internet has evolved rapidly over the years. The net has, among other things, changed how we communicate and how we do business with each other. The people who launched the internet probably had no idea that they were creating a communications network that later on would be used by more than half of the Earth's population. And the development has hardly slowed down. We are right in the middle of it. Gradually, the need for rules and laws for how the internet should be governed has increased. But regulating a rapidly evolving network used by people all over the world is not entirely easy. Who owns what? Who should take responsibility for what? There are still, more than a quarter of a century into the Internet age, many questions about the governing of the Internet. The fundamentals of Internet governance can be difficult to grasp, even for the most knowledgeable people. In an effort to make the understanding of the Internet's infrastructure a little more concrete, the Royal Swedish Academy of Engineering has described it as a lasagna, where different actors are responsible for different layers. It's impossible to present all the actors and their roles in a film this short, but we will try to give a picture of how the Internet is governed. Let's start with the various driving forces and interests that want to decide how the Internet should work. It's about technology and infrastructure. Who will build the various parts of the Internet and how will those parts be organized? It's about money. Who owns what on the Internet and who should be allowed to profit from it? And it's about content. Who decides what can be said and found on the Internet? So there are several parallel interests concerning the Internet. Therefore, it is governed according to a so-called multi-stakeholder model. Even though there are organizations that work for individual interests, the general view is still that you need to balance everyone's interests in order for the Internet to remain as open as possible so that people can communicate, express opinions and do business. Internationally, we begin to find a common view on how the Internet should be regulated in 2003, almost 10 years after the Internet broke through. This is when the UN began to discuss the governance of the Internet, as the world was invited to the WSIS, World Summit on the Information Society. Previously, the question of Internet control had mostly been about who should control the infrastructure that constitutes the Internet, IP addresses and domain names. But the UN's formulation was that the development of the Internet would be determined by a consensus between governments, the private sector and civil society that is, us citizens. As a result of the WSIS, the UN founded the IGF, Internet Governance Forum, with the aim of becoming the leading body for Internet development globally. But it was not just as simple as founding a new organization. There were, as we mentioned earlier, a number of organizations that were already engaged in Internet governance. Here are just a few. IAB, Internet Architecture Board, which works with how the internet is built and which protocols are used. Among other things, they act as advisors to ISOC, Internet Society, which works for the internet to be a free and open infrastructure. Not to mention ICANN, Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, which are actually the ones responsible for the distribution of IP addresses, cataloging of internet standards and DNS root systems, where the operational work is performed by IANA, Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. But now we're getting lost in the lasagna. Let's get back to the surface. The UN agencies had strong support among many countries, organizations and companies, especially outside the United States. This is because many of the organizations that were already involved in Internet governance were American, or at least based in the United States. After all, the Internet is an American invention that has its origins in the American national defense. For a long time, ICANN even belonged to the US government. Over time, ICANN and IANA have both been separated from the US government and most organizations work in symbiosis to drive the development of the Internet in a positive direction. There are also several regional organizations that are responsible for certain parts of the Internet's infrastructure in different areas of the world. In Europe, for example, the responsibility lies with an organization called RIPE, which is responsible for the distribution of IP numbers in the region. But why do these issues even need to be controlled? Well, today, 
the network of the internet itself is actually owned by a number of private companies, the internet operators. Of course, they have an interest in making more money, especially when their networks are used by some of the world's largest companies, such as Amazon and Google, which have the internet to thank for their entire existence. The purpose of the internet, the sharing of information, should take place within the law, laws that all the different countries' parliaments create. But here as well, private interests are pushing for legislation that restricts what you can and cannot do. For example, sharing copyrighted movies and music is seen as an obvious illegal act by many today, but it may not have been quite so obviously wrong when the first file sharing services came along. In recent years, media houses have been seeking to ban search engines such as Google from posting extracts of articles in the search results because Google can then make advertising money by publishing content that newspapers create. This was pushed through in the EU just a few years ago. There are more examples of how the private sector wants to regulate how we should be allowed to use the internet, despite the fact that technology is constantly evolving in a way that we individuals often appreciate. At the end of the day, you could ask yourself how much we as the civil society are really allowed to be heard. It will probably never be painless or obvious how the internet should be governed, or which rules shall apply. The growth of internet traffic is accelerating, the need for internet capacity and the amount of data sent over the internet is increasing every year with new apps and things connected to the net. That's why we need organizations that ensure that the internet works and develops so that we can use the net in the best possible way. Everyone can be involved. How? For example, by taking an interest in internet governance issues and safeguarding a free and open internet.